Over the years, the global war on terrorism has proved a successful rallying call for U.S. and U.K.-led military campaigns across the globe. However, as RT's Polly Boyka reports, the greater cause sometimes goes hand-in-hand -hand with brutal tactics. Somali-born Madi Hashi had grown up in the U.K. from the age of five. He was a British citizen until this summer when the 23-year-old went missing and his family found out that the Home Office had stripped him of his passport for allegedly being involved in Islamic extremism. His parents are distraught. They say that Madi is an innocent victim of a British intelligence plot, all because he refused to work for MI5. All I can say is that Madi is a Muslim, we believe, and he's a practicing Muslim. But being a practicing Muslim is not being an Islamist. That's all why I can say, that's why, that's all why he's being victimized. This is the quiet North London community center where Mehdi Hashi worked back in 2009. It was then that he and four of his Muslim colleagues say that they were approached and harassed separately by security agents. It's claimed that MI5 threatened to label them Islamic extremists if they refused to become informants for British intelligence. Campaigners raising awareness for Maddy's plight said that the constant threats made by British intelligence made life so unbearable that he left the UK. They were trying to offer him a job saying that, you know, effectively, you're an extremist. Uh, we know you're one. The only way out of this is for you to come and work for us, to come and help us. These are the kind of tactics that were being used because he is of Somali origin. This is a purely racist profiling policy of the British government and particularly its security agencies. Madi had been living in Somalia for the past two years, taking care of his grandmother and raising a son of his own. But several months ago, he disappeared, leaving his family in despair. My son is missing in the summer, this summer, but in, and I don't know where is he now, if he's alive or died, I don't know, how is he healthy, I don't know. We are very worried, all the, all the other family. The only information the Hashi family have now comes from a man who contacted them to say that he'd been in prison with Maddy in Djibouti. He told us that he had been fingerprinted and uh, DNA has been taken from him. And then the Americans uh, contacted, uh, when they, came, they found out that he's a British citizen, they contacted the British consular and the British consular said that uh, we have already removed our the citizenship from him. And then the Americans took him to well, somewhere we don't know. They don't know, but they fear he's being held at Camp Limonia in Djibouti, a notorious U.S. anti-terrorist base, where he may be the victim of an American rendition program in which suspects are unlawfully taken to third-party states to be illegally detained and tortured. The Hashi family want answers to simple questions, like what the allegations are against Madi, where he is located, and whether he's even alive. But when it comes to matters of intelligence, they're faced with a wall of silence. Lawyers acting on behalf of the Hashi family have received just this response from the government. It has been the policy of successive governments neither to confirm or deny speculation, allegations or assertions in respect of intelligence matters. This policy is maintained and accordingly the Secretary of State can neither confirm nor deny the allegations made on behalf of your client. And Mahdi's case is a classic case of where profiling and, um, you know, kind of almost ludicrous policies within um, this war on terror have resulted in an in in innocent individual, a, a helpless young man, effectively having their life ruined. Campaigners say that by stripping Mahdi Hashi of his passport, the British government has effectively washed their hands off his case leaving his family to continue the search for answers about their now stateless son. Polly Boyko, RT, London.